I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. On this show, I want to give you more good news about coronavirus and some defensive weapons that we've talked about, and I want to expand on that. The website covidtracking.com, April 23rd, 4,400,000 4, tests in the United States, 831,000 people are testing positive. That is an 18% positive test rate which means that 82% of people are, who are expressing cold and flu symptoms are testing negative for coronavirus. I thought that that was some good news to share with you. Keep in mind, you probably have seen the stories, a 104-year-old man, a U.S. veteran here in the United States, has uh, overcome uh, coronavirus and has now um, recovered. And there was a 106-year-old woman in the U.K. who also recovered from coronavirus. Again, comparing it to flu, some people say don't compare it to flu. I think it's a reasonable thing to do for perspective. Last year in 2018, 2019, there were 34,000 deaths in the United States. Most of us didn't hear about that. 61,000 deaths the year before in 2017 to 2018 of, of flu deaths per year. We didn't hear about that. There's 35 to 45 million people per year in the United States that get sick from the flu. There's 16 to 21 million medical visits with 500,000 to 800,000 hospitalizations in the United States per year for the flu. But again, we don't hear about that. Things are more acute now. American Heart Association reminds us that 859,000 people a year died from uh, coronary vascular disease in the United States. They also list the life's simple seven, simple seven things that the American Heart Association says we need to visit to decrease the uh, cardiovascular disease deaths in the United States. Not smoking, physical activity, healthy diet, body weight, which is healthy diet and exercise, control of cholesterol, healthy diet and exercise, blood pressure and blood sugar control, healthy diet and exercise. We're gonna visit that more, more in a minute. More good news, as you probably have heard, Santa Clara County in, in California has identified three individuals who died of coronavirus in February and March. Now, the, it's very sad, of course, for, for those individuals, but the good news is, is coronavirus has more than likely been circulating a lot earlier than we suspected. We thought that March 9th was the first person who died in the United States from that, but now we're, uh, we're seeing February 6th and February 17th are a couple of people that died from coronavirus. So it's probably circulated now is what the indication is much sooner than we realize. So it's probably more widespread, which means that maybe it's not as fatal as we think. Moving to peteratia.md.com, his blog post on April 20th of 2020. Today, I suspect American fatalities from COVID-19 will be more in line with a very bad, perhaps the worst season of influenza. The last decade saw flu deaths in the U.S. range from 12,000 to 61,000 deaths. So you can imagine how much variability exists. I, uh, go, to, go to his blog if you want to dive more deep into this. He, he wrote a very good piece on this. This suggests COVID-19 will kill tens of thousands in the U.S. this year, but not likely hundreds of thousands and definitely not millions as some previously thought. What accounts for my different outlook? He says two things. One, either the models were wrong because we incorrectly assigned properties about the biology um, of the virus uh, to its lethality. Or number two, the models were correct, but our societal behaviors with social distancing and staying at home have been affected. And then he suggests, well, is it more of the first case or the second case? So let's visit that. So we go to this show. I think some of you have heard about this. This is a show called Uncommon Knowledge with Peter Robinson of the Hoover Institution. He did two shows in March and April interviewing Jay Bhattacharya, who is a professor at Stanford. Two shows in March and April. Dr. Bhattacharya and others conducted tests for COVID-19 in Santa Clara County in California, one of the most active hotspots in the United States. The population weighted prevalence of SARS-CoV-2 antibodies, this is that antibody test now that we've been talking about, which we really, really need, which is on the upswing, which is going to help us really understand what to do moving forward, is 2.81 to 4% of the people tested. This implies that the infection is much more widespread, catch this now, 50 to 85 times the amount of spread than the number of con con confirmed cases right now 
which means that many more people have been exposed, probably don't know it, which means that, you know, it's, it's good news because it's not as deadly as we thought. The WHO was talking about 3% case fatality rate, 3 of 100, but these numbers, 50 to 85 times more people being exposed, indicates that the, the case fatality rate is more like 0.1% or one or two in a thousand. And that approach, again, seasonal flu numbers. Good news for us. You can track this information down on this website, medrxiv.org. They are conducting additional tests to get uh, additional information. I'm gonna come back to Dr. Peter Atia, who was interviewed on the show Impact Theory with Tom Bilio. They were talking about what, what else can we be doing at home to strengthen our immune system. First thing that Dr. Peter Atia says is, it looks like people that have been exposed are having more long-lasting immunity. We don't know how long yet, but there is indications that we're getting more immunity, and that's good. You get exposed, and you're gonna have that natural vaccination, if you will. To strengthen the immune system, Dr. Peter Atia says, sleep is one of the most important things you can do for the immune system. Enough sleep and regular sleep. I've talked about that for decades. Exercise every day, but not too much. Most people need more exercise, but you don't want to over-exercise. Food, don't stress graze and minimize destructive eating. He was saying, I have to do that for, for myself, says Dr. Peter Atia, and me too. And you know, that's an important thing. Most people, if you just look at that and visit that, that'll be effective. What about supplements? He did say zinc. He mentioned vitamin C and vitamin D, showing promise is helping us. Get outside, he said, with a mask. A mask is a two-way barrier. You're going to protect other people from you. You're going to protect yourself somewhat from other, uh, other people. Masks are, are getting more indications of being effective. And then emotional check-ins. Emotional check-ins. Using your spouse, if appropriate. Hit pause a little bit sooner with your emotions as well. Is it something else that's bothering me, which is maybe why you have a short fuse with yourself, with your spouse, with your kids? Ask yourself, is it something else? Hit pause, work together as a team at home. Okay, into our defensive weapons. This is similar to the American Heart Association's Life's Simple 7 that I listed earlier. Remember that people at high risk for flu, flu complications are as follows. Heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, cancer, people who live in nursing homes and long-term care facilities as we discussed in previous shows. So what do we do? We visit that list of six things that we can all do right now that will help us combat flu, help us combat coronavirus, COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2. Um, Number one, diet. We mentioned that. Eat the cleanest diet that you can possibly tolerate. Number two, exercise. Try to exercise every day to your tolerance. Talk to your doctor. Don't overexercise. Number three, spine and nervous system. Take care of your spine. Take care of your posture. Take care of your flexibility. Go to your chiropractor. Get your wellness checks. Number four, immune boosting supplements. I've discussed these before. Fish oil, B, C, D, zinc. And there are many others. Number five, getting enough and regular rest. And just as a sidebar to that, making sure you're drinking enough water, but not too much, enough water. Staying away from soda. Staying away from diet soda. No diet drinks. No sport drinks. Stay away from those is my recommendation. <clears throat> and number six is stress. Visiting stress just for another moment. Work with meditation. Work with mindfulness. There's a, a, a amount of Programs that are out there are astounding, that are really effective. One of my favorites is Dr. Joe Dispenza. Go to his website, dig in. He's got a variety of online programs that you can do. And he reminds us, he did an experiment with 120 people. They did 10 minutes of meditation, three times a day, for four days. And in those meditations, they focus on changing frustration, resentment, and fear, and replacing that with appreciation, gratitude, and thankfulness. Here's the results. Immunoglobulin A, one of the primary defenses that your body has for viruses and bacteria, the best flu shot you'll ever get, he says. They had a 50% increase in IgA levels just after those four days. He says, you don't need a flu shot if you're getting these kind of results. Go check into that. Meditation, 10 minutes, three times a day, four days, in increasing that by 50%, that's huge. 
They also uh, were measuring 7,500 gene and gene regulations. In four days, two genes that suppress cancer growth and tumors are activated and upregulated in, in the research. This is only one research that they've been doing. Genes that upregulated uh, were for anti-cancer, anti-aging, anti-heart disease, anti-stroke. There's a lot of benefit for meditation and mindfulness. Look at these things. Work these things. These, these are great news coming out, not only for coronavirus now, but for heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, and diabetes. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. Please join me again.